I'm Nelson Dellis, five-time USA Memory Champion and Memory Coach, and today we're going to be answering your questions on Twitter. This is Memory Support. At Gulab Zaman asks, does lack of sleep affect memory? Yes, definitely. If you don't get enough sleep, you're not going to be able to pay attention or have tremendous focus the next day. And focus is a huge cornerstone of having a good memory. On the other side of things, sleep is super important for consolidating memories. During certain deeper states of sleep, your hippocampus is actually transferring data from short term to the long term. And if that process doesn't happen, you will potentially lose that information. So it's a way to consolidate that day's information for the long term. At Joe Guy 358 asks, does memory loss or weakening always mean dementia or Alzheimer's? Definitely not. Um, although I will say if you are worried, I would consult a doctor. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean that your memory has to get worse. My family has a history of Alzheimer's. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. And that's actually what spurred this journey for me into the world of mnemonics. I didn't have a good memory before I learned about memory techniques and memory championships. And it all started because seeing my grandmother pass away made me question, you know, is that my future? The encouraging message here is that we all can improve our memories. So if you feel like you have a bad memory or you're worried that your memory is aging, you can turn it around. At Bobby Meow asks, how the f can someone solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded? So what people will do is they'll assign each of the pieces a letter of the alphabet. So technically each part of each piece has its own letter. So the top here might be an A, whereas the back here might be a Q. And if you can remember the sequence in which the pieces need to be solved, you can create a sequence of letters, which could equate to a series of words. At Barnaby Farn asks, how the actual fuck does memory work? So it used to be thought that memories were stored entirely in the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain parallel to your ear, about the size of your thumb. Recently, they discovered that it's actually different kinds of memories are stored in different parts of the brain. At Orbital Railgun asks, what the f is it about moving that totally wipes my memory? I get up to do something and I instantly forget what that thing was. So it's, there's an interesting study that was done by a psychologist at Notre Dame where he talked about this phenomenon that we forget things when we move through doorways. When you open the fridge and you forget what you opened it for, or you walk into a room and you forget what you were walking in there for, we forget things where we cross an event boundary. And so there wasn't really any solution to it other than maybe when you're trying to memorize something, stay where you are rather than crossing some kind of barrier mid uh, learning or mid memory. At Casually Cruel Me asks, how the f I can memorize Taylor Swift lyrics, but not physics formulas? <laughs> there are a few things at play here. One is procedural memory. That's basically muscle memory. When you sing a song or listen to a song over and over again, you are building it into your long-term muscle memory. Second at play here is the emotional response. You know, you're connecting to her music, her lyrics, the way it makes you feel. And that's a lot more interesting than say a physics formula. And then the third thing at play is encoding. The way that the song is structured, the beat, the rhythm, the way things rhyme, lends itself to being easier to memorize. At hashtag life Greg asks, got any hacks for how to remember a list of 11 items? Let's say you wanna remember a list of grocery items. All right, let's say that we have uh, asparagus, bread, bananas, sour cream, and coffee beans. To memorize that list, we can use a technique called the linking method, which basically takes each of the items on our list, turns them into some kind of fun interactive image, and connects it one by one to the next one in the list. So maybe this is how we picture it, right? We have asparagus, so maybe I take those asparagus spears and stab the bread and break it down into pieces, and it reveals that there was a banana inside. I then peel that banana and maybe some sour cream liquid just pours out of it, right? And then finally, maybe I scoop up that sour cream and just dump it in my coffee, which is filled with coffee beans. So that list would be asparagus, bread, bananas, sour cream, and coffee beans. And what we've done is each of those individual images has a element of a story that connects it or links it to the next thing in the list. At JJ Pierce asks, how do you memorize lines overnight? asking for a friend. Yeah, so there's this technique I call the first letter method. And basically, you take a passage that you're trying to memorize and you read it a few times, then write it down, this is important, just the first letters of each word as they show themselves in the actual text. Then you'll be surprised that you can actually read from that first letter only script 
and remember the full words for the whole thing. You do that a few times, then take it away, close your eyes and see if you can remember it. And most times, like nine times out of 10, you'll have the whole passage memorized. At Orkana HJ asks, is there a correlation between exercise and memory? Yes, both indirectly and directly. Indirectly, you know, being fit and working out and exercising makes you feel good. It lowers anxiety, reduces stress, improves sleep. All of those things improve your memory. And then directly, it improves blood flow to the brain. It reduces inflammation in the brain and it encourages brain health. Alex Frandisco asks, what is a memory palace and how do you make one? Inquiring minds want to know. All right, so a memory palace, it's a technique where you use a physical space that you map out in your mind and you place images for the things you're memorizing along that pathway. Some of the best memory palaces are gonna be places that you're super familiar with. And then when you wanna recall the information, all you gotta do is go back to that same physical space in your mind and walk through the place. So let's say that you wanted to memorize the five largest countries in the world in order. Those happen to be Russia, Canada, USA, China, and Brazil. Since we're doing this together, maybe we could use this table. Now our pathway that we're gonna decide on is gonna start at the brain and make its way to this side of the table to the headphones. One image per location. Now, in terms of what are we putting on each location? Well, with countries, you can maybe think of an association that's natural to you. For example, for Russia, I might think of a martini, a vodka martini. So I would imagine maybe on the brain is a balanced martini glass filled with vodka. Then I go to the next location, I'm on the laptop, and we have to memorize Canada. I think of Canada, I think of a hockey stick. They play a lot of hockey, right? So maybe a hockey stick is just slap shotting the crap out of this thing and sending it flying into the wall and exploding into bits. Next one would be the third location, the deck of cards. An association for USA, I might think of like a hamburger. So maybe I would imagine instead of an actual burger patty in my bun, but it's a deck of cards stuck in there. Next, we go to the fourth location, and that would be the fourth thing that I'm trying to memorize, which is China. I think of chopsticks for Chinese food. So I'd have to incorporate that image with this object. So I'd imagine maybe picking this up with chopsticks and having a hard time kind of rotating the cube, trying to solve it. And then finally, the last location here would be our Brazil. I think of Brazil, I think of soccer ball. They play soccer really well. So I would maybe imagine putting these headphones around a soccer ball so you can listen to some jams. Now, we've just memorized the list. Doesn't really feel like it, but if we wanted to remember the list and recall it, we just go back through our little memory palace and pull up the images that we left there. Martini, Russia. Hockey stick, Canada. Burger, USA. Chopsticks, China. Soccer ball, Brazil. What's kind of beautiful about this technique is that you can say that list now forwards or you could say it backwards or you could jump to any location and get any piece of information as you want it. At Abdo Viper asks, how to memorize a deck of cards? At the Memory Championships, one of the events is to memorize a full 52 card deck in sequence as fast as possible. Now, the way I do that, I do a combination of changing the cards into images and then storing them in a memory palace. How do I come up with the images? And there's a system called the PAO system, Person, Action, Object. Every card I've given a preset person, action and object to. So whenever I see it, I don't see the card, I see the person or the action associated with that or the object. And for every three cards, I group them into this mini scene. The first card's always the person, the second card's always the action or the verb, and the third is the object. So to take an example, the first card that we had was eight of clubs, which to me is Bear Grylls the action adventurer guy. I probably can't even remember why it became that, but there was a reason. Whenever I see eight of clubs, it's Bear Grylls. Feels like I'm looking at him, it's so ingrained. Then this next card is the second in a sequence of three, so it's the action. And my action for four of hearts is urinating. So we have Bear Grylls urinating, and then the third card in this set, Ace of Clubs, is a thong. That's my image for it. So I have Bear Grylls urinating on a thong. Weird, but memorable, uh, and I placed it in one of my memory palaces, the first location of which is my high school bedroom. I imagine that action, that little story happening in a location at a memory palace. Then we go into the next location. Essentially, it's a person, action, and then an object, and then do that for every subsequent set of three. And I move through my memory palace as I place down those different sets of images. And then I continue that process for every subsequent set of three until there's no more cards left. Uh, seven of diamonds, uh, king of spades, two of spades, ace of spades, three of spades, you get the idea. 
At Tanvi Agarwal asks, how are bad memories so, so clear and exact in our minds, but happy memories fade away? Back in the medieval ages, they would throw kids in the river after memorizing something. And it was so that they could actually remember the information better because their adrenaline spiked right after learning. And there are studies that show that in situations of high stress or where your adrenaline is peaked, you're actually gonna remember that information better. At Summer Ahrens asks, how does memory have fragrance? Like, why can I summon the smell of fall 2019 into my brain? Explain how I can smell my kindergarten classroom, but I don't know what I did yesterday. So smell is one of the earliest evolved senses in our brain, and it actually bypasses the thing called the thalamus, which is responsible for kind of delegating information between different parts of the brain. So technically with smell memories, they go directly to either the amygdala or the hippocampus, which are responsible for dealing with memories. That's that's why usually smell memories are so intense and so instant. At Everyday Innov TR asks, anyone ever competed in the United States Memory Championship? Yes. <laughs> Many times, I'm the five-time USA Memory Champion winner. This is actually the trophy uh, that I got from my most recent win last year. It's in the shape of a seahorse, which is what the hippocampus looks like. The competition is pretty interesting in itself. It's a day-long event where we basically memorize useless stuff. Decks of playing cards, huge phone numbers, lists of words, names and faces, poetry, and more. And basically whoever can memorize the most, the fastest, and the most accurately becomes the USA Memory Champion. At Yours Not Truly asks, how do you remember passwords? Are you mind mapping like homes? First of all, a password has to be memorable, but it also needs to be secure. One of the best ways to do it is to choose a sentence that is funny or weird or bizarre to you. Nelson, Charles, that's my middle name, Dallas rocks my socks off. Take that sentence and just break it down into the first letters. Capital N, capital C, capital D, lowercase r, m, s, o, exclamation. Keep things that were capital, keep things that were lowercase, and there you have a pretty complex password. It's not my actual password, by the way. At above O Admala asks, how are mnemonics helpful? It's just a second thing to memorize. When you use mnemonics and the proper technique, you're taking advantage of things that our brains are really good at. Namely, thinking in pictures. We remember pictures way better than anything else. Pictures that have meaning to yourself. And then secondly, spatial orientation or organization. How do you structure the images or things that you're memorizing? If you have a way to do that, you're making your life much easier at Charlie Weather asks, how do you remember people's names? Really tired of feeling like I'm disrespecting everyone I meet all the time. This is probably one of the most common questions I get. It's only normal that when we're meeting people, we're probably thinking about the smart thing we wanna say or looking cool, but we're not paying attention to the person in front of us who's about to tell us their name. But there is a technique, and I actually am pretty good at this. This is one of the records that I still hold. So let's do an example. I've been given 25 different faces here all hiding a name behind uh, the photo. And uh, I'm gonna take a minute or two to look this over and memorize them. First, you turn the name into a picture. I would look at the person's face, find something quick about them that I notice. Usually the first thing that comes to mind, whether it's pretty eyes, a distinctive mole, a big red beard. So for this guy, Oliver, I think of Oliver Twist. So I thought of me twisting his beard uh, pretty forcefully. He doesn't look too pleased about it in his expression there, so it kind of makes the image a little more funny. Then I just repeated that process through all 25 names. I did a quick review just to make sure that I had it solidified. Okay, so that took me about a minute or two, and let's see if I can get them all right. So this guy is Max. This girl is Georgia. Sandy. Virginia. Stan. Tara. Uh, Lucas, Todd, uh, William, Sean, uh, Alma, uh, Akash, Ka um, Camila, Sophia, Emma, uh, Sarah, uh, Elijah, Carmela, Eric, uh, Carla, yeah. uh, Keith, Noah, Mara, Cindy, and 
Oliver. There we go. At Bradley Lease asks, what is your favorite resource for training your memory for tests and quizzes? There really are three ways to get something into your long-term memory. One is spaced repetition. So spacing out over time the things, the study sessions basically, what you're trying to memorize, give it some room. So cramming is not a good idea. The second thing is interleaving. So in between sessions, you actually study something totally different and then come back to the information you were trying to remember. That's also very effective. Third would be active recall. So actually trying actively to remember the things that you're trying to remember. That sounds pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people just look at the thing they're memorizing and think that they'll have it in their memory just by going through it over and over again. When you put that thing away and you just close your eyes and you really try to get it, even if it's not perfect, that process is so effective. At Aphrodite asks, anyone know foods that improve your memory? Yeah, there's a few. Avocado, blueberries, broccoli, turmeric, dark chocolate, and walnuts. I think the main one that I would encourage people to investigate is omega-3, DHA specifically. It's a fatty acid found in the brain. We don't get a lot of it in our diet, but we need it to help improve our brain health. So you can get that from fish oil pills. There are certain foods that have it, like fatty fish, like salmon. At Bipolar Bear Dick says, Prevagen says it'll help your memory because it contains jellyfish. Do jellyfish have good memories? I don't know specifically about Prevagen, but there's a lot of kind of snake oil type brain supplements out there. Often they're referred to as nootropics. Some don't really have any proof or the research is very weak or not proven. The best pill you can take to improve your memory is not a pill at all. It's just better diet, better sleep, more exercise, and using your memory. So those are all the questions for today. I hope I inspired you a little bit to start your journey into the world of memory. Thanks for watching Memory Support.